Good morning and happy Sabbath. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Welcome to the worship services of the Voice of Hope Church. Revival is in the air, and we are thrilled to welcome each and every one of you to join us in experiencing the presence of God as we embark on this journey of revival together. Welcome to the Voice of Hope. Welcome to God's Oasis of Love. Join us each Wednesday for our midweek prayer meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. We are continuing our series of answering your questions from the question box. You can join us in person or via Zoom. Either way, your soul will be blessed and encouraged. You are invited to our first midday celebration on Wednesday, April 17th at 12 o'clock noon to pray, praise, and thank the Lord for his love and blessings. We will continue weekly with our midday prayer and praise service beginning this Wednesday, April 17th. Attention seniors 55 and above. Our first seniors meeting is this Sunday, April 14th at 1 o'clock p.m. We will meet in storm room number two. Please be on time. Thanking you in advance. Parkview is asking all of our members to pray for the school each day at 3.30 p.m., specifically asking everyone to set their alarms and take a moment each day to pray, specifically for our students, teachers, and 80 students next year. God is honored when we pray bold prayers, and 80 students is a bold goal. Thank you for your prayers. Do you want to get in shape in 2024? Exercise classes have resumed here at Voice of Hope on Mondays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. For more information, see Sister Rachel Peoples. The Community Service Department, along with the ushers, are accepting donated items to help complete their blessing bags. If you would like to help, please see Sister Rachel Peoples for a list of items. Women's chorus rehearsal is held from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. every Sunday here at the church. Please join us. <coughs> Male chorus rehearsal is held from 1.15 to 2.15 on 2nd and 4th Sabbaths here at the church. Please join us. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God will do a new thing in 2024. For those of you who are interested in being a part of Set Free Praise Dance Ministry, one of Voice of Hope's newest ministries, please contact Sister Maria Meredith for more information. Set free dance rehearsals are every Sunday at 1 o'clock p.m. here at the church. We look forward to seeing you there. Hello to all singles and friends. Oklahoma State and Voice of Hope Singles Ministry presents Springtime Meet and Greet, All You Can Eat Get Together. Location, Joby Barnes Regional Park, the main pavilion, 8700 East Reno Avenue. May 5th from 1 to 6 p.m., and the cost is $10 per person. There'll be fun icebreakers at 2 o'clock and 4 p.m. Volleyball, bing bag toss, table games, and a Jenga tournament with a prize giveaway. AYM is inviting out everyone out next Sabbath, April 20th, for AY in the Park. We will meet at Martin Nature Park at 6 o'clock p.m. Join us as we seek to find God in nature and learn of our Creator through all that He has created. Join AYM for a fun-filled day at Frontier City with a unique experience. Revel in live Christian music performances, uplifting messages from guest speakers, coasters, family attractions, and more at Ride for Christ. All ages are welcome. The date is April 21st from 12 to 6 p.m. You can see me for more details. Adventist Youth Ministry will also be hosting a community event on May 18th. We are collecting diapers and wipes to give away, and we are asking for your help. You may give money to help purchase these items by placing the money in a tithe envelope and label it AY Community Event. You can also purchase the diapers and wipes personally and bring them to church starting next Sabbath. Thank you. Our Spring Revival Encountering Jesus ends tonight at 7 o'clock p.m. Our guest speaker is Pastor Alex Horton from Memphis, Tennessee. It is not too late to share the flyer with family and friends so that they can make it out on this last night of our revival. Thanking you in advance for your prayers and support. Thought for the week, revival is falling in love with Jesus all over again. Vance Habner.
Good morning. Did you know that our God is a mighty fortress? If you agree with that, won't you join me on your feet as we sing our hymn of worship for this morning? A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Amen? Let's sing it out aloud. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us more. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Next verse. Did we in our own strength confide our striving would be Were not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing? Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is he, Lord Sabba of his name, from age to age the same. And he must win the battle. Last verse. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed his triumph to triumph us. Excuse me. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father God, you are a mighty fortress. You are the great I am. You are the God of the impossible. And we've gathered here today to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that is due your name. Meet us at our point of need and have your way in our lives. And may we leave this place um, charged up. <laughs> encouraged and may we go and do a mighty work for you it's in jesus blessed and holy name we pray all god's people say amen, amen. and amen you may be seated in the presence of the lord today anybody happy in the lord today yeah. amen amen i think we got one or two people so let me just ask that again anybody happy in the lord today yeah. amen amen so glad to welcome you all out tonight and uh, I am just still excited because we are we are we're winding up a three-day revival and we are thanking God for the man of God uh, Pastor Alex Horton let the church say amen 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 now for those of you who were here last night I, I asked you know I told you I was going to ask you a question uh, tonight so uh, if you want to do, uh, take care of that task I ask you to do, if you remember, you can do it right now. I'll just pause for one second. If you hadn't done it already, you have an opportunity to do it right now. Uh, uh, I don't know, some people may have forgotten what they were asked to do. Well, we'll, we'll remind you a little bit later. Amen, amen. But come out tonight. The revival starts what time? 7 o'clock. And what time does it end? Well, we don't know what time it's going to end. Amen. 
I tell the pastor every night, if the spirit falls, we're going to be here. Amen? Amen. Now, you might leave, but the revival is going to go on. But we are generally closed by eight, but uh, we don't want to rush the spirit either. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. So seven o'clock tonight, and we are asking you who are here right now, show up at seven. As we close out this revival, Encountering Jesus, we also asking you, if you would text a friend, call somebody, send a flyer, invite somebody else out tonight, even though it's the last night. Do you know people come to Jesus at the very last hour? And somebody might be in the kingdom because you picked up the phone and made a phone call. Amen. Amen. Well, that's tonight. I'll give a more uh, formal introduction for our speaker a little bit later in the service. Uh, next Sabbath. When? Next Sabbath is going to be big. Now, I'm so glad you're here and because we'll, of Pastor Horton, but we've got another powerhouse speaker on next week. Amen. And next week's emphasis is on stewardship. So we are going to do a little stewardship intensive. We're going to speak on stewardship, stewardship that morning. We're going to, we're asking you to stay. We said, don't go home. So we're going to be presenting, having a little light meal on next Sabbath. And then about two o'clock, we're going to go into some stewardship training from two to four, something like that, two to four. So that you can be out in time, rest a little bit, and then be at AY at 6 o'clock in the park. Amen. But the stewardship is also going to continue on Sunday morning, 9 to 11. It's a stewardship intensive. And I believe you're going to learn some things. Some of you say, well, you know, I know about tithes and offerings. Well, you might. But sometimes we have problems with the rest of that money that God has given us. How do we manage that? But I believe you're going to learn something to help your finances as we um, see something about God's economic empowerment plan. So come next week. Come be prepared to stay, eat dinner, and stay for that afternoon, and come back on Sunday morning. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. Well, we want to hear the man of God. So I'm not going to prolong these announcements, but I do want to say happy birthday again to Sister Emma Shavers. Can you all say amen? Amen. amen. Sister Marion Miller. Amen. Brother Tony, Tony Moore celebrated a birthday this week. Amen. And then on tomorrow. Tomorrow. Sister Robin Allen, God's, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Sister Robin Allen and uh, Brother Carmelo Phillips will be celebrating the birthday. Amen, 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 amen. Well, before I sit down, I just, we want to, we have a, a very special guest with us all the way from the island of St. Martin. Did I say that right? St. Martinique. St. Martinique, Pastor Luther St. Eli, Eli, Eli. Let church say amen. So glad to have you with us. God bless you. God bless you. And we're glad to have Brother Donnie Barbie with us. And then there's one other very special, very, very special individual that's here. Her name is Jory. Jory Johnson, is that it, Jory? Amen, amen, Jory. And Jory is only, how old is Jory? Two months old, amen. Let the church say amen. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, well, I believe God has a blessing in store for each and every one of us. So we're going to go right on with our children's story, and may God richly bless each and every one. God bless you. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called A Big Storm. Today's memory verse is from Psalms 118, verse 6. 
It says, The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. The message for today's story is we can help others be safe. Have you ever been really, really scared? Maybe a big dog came near you. Or maybe you could not find your mom in the store. Everyone feels afraid once in a while. Who helps you feel safe? Jesus had been telling stories and helping people all day. Sad people felt happy again, and sick people were well again. The people really wanted to stay with Jesus, but it was getting late. Slowly, they packed their things and began to leave. It had been a very busy day, and everyone was so tired. Jesus and his disciples climbed into a boat. Let's go across to the other side of the lake, Jesus said. We can rest there. A soft wind gently pushed the boat. The waves made the boat go up and down, up and down. Oh! Jesus yawned and leaned back against a pile of fishing nets, and he went right to sleep. The sun went down and soon it was dark. The disciples liked to be out in a boat at night because they liked the cool wind. They liked to talk together as the boat sailed across the water. All of a sudden, the wind started to blow harder, a strong, cold, and stormy wind. This stormy wind made big waves that splashed into the boat. The wind blew harder and harder. The disciples were afraid. They knew that the storm could make their boat tip over. Lightning flashed and they saw Jesus sleeping. Jesus! Jesus! Save us! They cried. Jesus sat up. He felt the waves splashing into the boat, and he saw the frightened disciples. Jesus stood up and said, Peace, be still. And right away, the strong wind stopped blowing. The waves did not splash into the boat anymore. The night became quiet and still. Why were you afraid? Jesus asked his disciples. You do not need to be afraid. I am with you. The disciples knew that they were safe because Jesus was with them. When you feel afraid, you too can say, Jesus, please help me, just as the disciples did. You might see someone else who is afraid. You can help them say, Jesus, please help me. Maybe you could give them a hug or even hold their hand. Or you can get a grown-up to help. You can tell others that Jesus will help them too. This podcast was brought to you by gracelink.net and Studio L. that Jesus is worthy, worthy to be praised, amen? Yes. In fact, as we begin this, this worship, we'll invite you to stand up on your feet and to sing these words to God. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, blessed Savior, He's worthy, amen? Praise so sing it out loud. Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. It's a simple song. Praise Him. Praise Him. Come on now and praise Him. Praise Him. What's his name? Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. One more time. From praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Blessed Savior, He's worthy to be praised. When do you start praising Him from the rising sun? 
from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same. Is he worthy? Sing, he's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. Jesus is worthy. He's worthy to be out loud just praise him praise him come on and praise him his name is Jesus blessed Savior he's worthy to be praised the second verse says for God is our rock for God is He's a hope of salvation. Hope of salvation. If you believe it, sing it out loud. A strong deliverer. A strong deliverer. And in him will I trust. In him will I always trust. Glory, 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 glory. Now say it again. Say it again. Jesus. Oh, I like the way it sounds. Say it. Jesus. There's no sweeter name than Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. Give me one more time now. Jesus. Okay, one more time. Jesus. Oh, I want one more time. Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. He's worthy to be praised. Give him a hand, praise right now. Amen. I got carried away, but his name is a sweet name, amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Oh, yes. If you don't know this song, you'll sing it with us. It's a beautiful song that says, We come before his presence with thanksgiving. You enter into his courts of praise. It's in the Bible, amen? We're going to sing it right now. We come into his presence and we give him praise. Come. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. And we enter into his courts. Enter into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him. And be thankful unto him for he is worthy. He's worthy of all praise. Worthy of all praise. Let's sing it one more time. Come before his presence with thanksgiving. Come before his presence with thanksgiving oh yes and we enter into his courts with praise enter into his courts with praise and be thankful and be thankful and be thankful unto him for he is worthy worthy of all praise how many know for the lord is good and his mercy for the lord is good and his mercy is ever and it's true and it's true endure forever and be thankful unto and be thankful and be thankful unto for he is worthy for he
he is worthy. For he is worthy. Worthy. Worthy of all praise. All praise. For he is worthy. He's worthy of. Half of praise, he's worthy, Amen. he's worthy, he's Amen. worthy of all praise. Amen. Amen. Excuse me, I was all caught up. <laughs> Lord, when we speak your name, something happens in the room. Our hands go up. We can't wait to see what you're going to do. When we speak your name, mm -hmm. power is released. As we bow down before you, every single demon has to flee. Before we do anything else, we call on you. We call on you, Jesus. Move how you want to move, Jesus. Do what you want to do, Jesus. Show up. Show out. Lord, we trust you and only you, Jesus. Throw your weight around, Jesus. Save whomever you want to save, Jesus. Do whatever you want to do, Jesus. Make a way out of no way. Lord, you can handle any and every situation. And we won't dare put one foot in front of the other without first consulting you. And Lord, this morning, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us traveling mercies to church. Lord, be with this service. Lord, move us all out the way. Let your will be done, not ours. And Lord, our needs differ just as our faces differ, Lord. And Lord, we need you today. Lord, we need you every day. This world has no peace, but Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. And with you living in our hearts, Lord, we have peace. Lord, this morning, I want to ask you to go to Tulsa and see about Ariel Crony. They're in the hospital. Lord, also go to Texas and see about Trina die. Lord, I'm saying go to Texas, go to Tulsa, but Lord, you're already there. You're everywhere, Lord, you're already there. And Lord, also, we ask a special prayer for Juanita Davis, Janice Prince, Debbie Campbell, Norma Gissendander, Tyrell Cornish, Angela Lee, Lord, all the bereaved families. Donna Curley, William Haraway, Clarice Green, Laverne Houston, Robin Moore, Mary Randall, and Lord, we would be remiss if we left out our youth and young adults. 
Lord, be with all of us, all ages, the young, the old, the unborn, the, the confused, Lord. Just, just be with all. Meet all needs, Lord. And Lord, if I fail to ask anything, please don't fail in granting it to us, is my prayer. Amen. Good morning, saints of God. Today, there would be many farmers who would be uneasy if the Jewish laws that existed were enacted today. For you see, the law of God gave the poor a right to a certain portion of the produce of the soil. So when hungry, a man was at liberty to go to his neighbor's field or orchard or vineyard and eat of the grain or the fruit and satisfy his hunger. It was, when, it was in accordance with the permission that the disciples of Jesus plucked and ate of the standing grain as they passed through the field on the Sabbath day. All the gleanings of the harvest field, orchard, and vineyard belonged to the poor. When thou cuttest down thine harvest in thy field, said Moses, and hast forgotten a sheaf in the field, thou shalt not go again to fetch it. When thou beatest thine olive tree, thou shalt not go over the boughs again. When thou gatherest the grapes of thy vineyard, thou shalt not glean it afterward. It shall be for the stranger, for the fatherless, for the refugees, for the poor, for those who do not have. You see, we in this bountiful country have plenty. I don't know if you've ever been in the fields, but I've gleaned in the fields. I remember working at Pine Forge on Brock and Brow's farm. And I remember we would just throw away countless numbers of fruits and vegetables at the end of the harvest. Food that could feed thousands, yea, millions of people if only we would properly take care of and store. God has blessed us with much and we ought to be willing to share what he has given to those who do not have. That's proper stewardship. Even more so than that today, I want you to understand that when we practice proper stewardship, it gives us calm in the midst of financial storms. For you see, a man had a heart attack and was rushed to the hospital. He could receive little company and was not to get excited. While, the hospital, while in the hospital, a rich uncle died and left him a million dollars. His family wondered how to break the news to him with, it, with the least amount of excitement. It was decided that they would ask the preacher if he would go and break the news quietly to the man. The preacher went and gradually led up to the question. The preacher asked the patient what he would do if he inherited a million dollars. The man looked at the preacher and said, why I would give half of that million dollars to the church and make sure that you had a generous portion. The preacher dropped dead. <laughs> My brothers and sisters today, God wants to give us a generous portion. He wants to share with us. We don't have to drop dead. We just rest in the clutches of his arms knowing that when we are faithful to him, 
he promises to open up the windows and pour you out a blessing. So this Sabbath, we want some window opening. We want to be able to watch God give where we do not have and bless where he wants to bless. The deacons will come now forward as we lift the morning's tithe and offering. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are thankful for both gift and giver. Bless those who gave and those who had it not to give. Be with these funds. Change them from their carnal use to the spiritual that they might go for the preaching and the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Is the Lord all right with you? Amen. I say, is the Lord all right with you? Amen. Amen. Yes, he's just all right with me. I've already um, several nights introduced our speaker, but there are some who've never heard him. And uh, so I'm just going to give a short introduction. Uh, our speaker is no stranger to uh, this church. He was born and raised in Oklahoma City. Amen. Amen. And uh, he is a product of the 10th Street Church. Amen. So he's just a son coming back home. Amen. 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 Well, he, he uh, went to school, Southwestern Adventist University, and graduated also from Andrews University, and started his ministry in Texas, then went to New Mexico, then came back to Texas, and uh, then he made a tragic decision to leave the Southwest Region Conference, oh, which tragic, I'm still... Tragic. <laughs> He's got a big smile on his face, but I don't know. It was tragic for me, okay, to see my friend. And uh, he, our paths crossed back in 1985 when he was in New Mexico, pastoring in Albuquerque and Roswell, and I came and took Roswell from him, I think. And so, but, um, 
But so next year, uh, Pastor Horn, that means you and I have been friends for about 40 years. Wow. Let the church say amen. 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 Well, currently he is the pastor of the Longview Heights Church in Memphis, Tennessee. But his greatest claim to fame is when he was in Michigan, he met the former Deborah Austin. And a love affair began that has been going on for 41 years now. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And to their union, um, the Lord has blessed them with two children, three grandchildren. Amen. Here's the scripture that encourages Pastor Horton the most. It's Psalms 32, 8. It says, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou should go. I will guide thee with mine eye. And for so many years, Pastor Horton has experienced the leading and guiding of the Lord. Uh, let me just say this. He's not only an excellent preacher, which many of you know, but he's a gifted singer. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I've been watching him. I'm, I'm thinking sometimes he might come and grab the mic for come one, on, you know, come just on. come and join you. Come See, they, uh, they, he's a gifted singer. Who knows? Who, who knows? He might just sing before, before to, this whole revival is over with. I don't know. I just don't know what will happen, but we'll see. But we're thankful that um, Sister uh, Horton allowed him to be with us this weekend and bless us, and I believe you're in for a blessing. Uh, his will be the next voice you will hear after our praise ensemble. Hear ye the man of God. Do that. 
praise team if you're just sharing that testimony of praise with us this morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord. Friends that I've known since I was a little child. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, it was a couple hundred times ago. Uh, but it's so good to see each one of you all. And those that I've met here recently. I've had a good time just sharing the wonderful love of Jesus. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Do you really love him? He, he has a powerful name. And when we call on his name, great things happen in our lives. This, this, this wonderful mother, she would take her child to the grocery store. And um, he had a love for chocolate chip cookies. Does anybody love chocolate chip cookies? He loved chocolate chip cookies. And when, when she would take him to the grocery store, he would act like a plum dumb fool if he didn't get chocolate chip cookies. So he would just scream and yell and get all upset if she didn't buy him chocolate chip cookies. Well, this last time she took him to the store, she said, things are going to be different today at the store. She took the belt. Does anybody remember the belt? She took, sometimes we don't use the belt anymore, but she took the belt and she had the belt in the shopping cart as she was riding in the store. She said, if you act crazy, I'm going to use this belt on you right here in the store. And um, he, he looked at the belt, looked at mom, and realized mom was serious. And so he would go down, the, she would go down the aisles of the produce, and she'd put the different things in the cart. He was just looking, looking at his mom, looking at the belt. He was quiet because the belt was right there. Yeah. Then he'd go down the, other, the different aisles, she would go get some vegetables and some canned goods, and then finally she went down the aisle where the cookies were. He looked at the cookies, he looked at mom, he looked at the belt. And all of a sudden he saw these chocolate chip cookies. And he wanted to ask mom if he could have chocolate chip cookies. And mom, before he asked, said, you will not have any chocolate chip cookies today. No chocolate chip cookies for you. He looked at mom and he looked at the belt. He put his head down. It was just terrible. She went on through the store and got different things and put them in the basket. And finally, she came to the checkout counter. And at the checkout counter, she was just, everything was being uh, scanned and, 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 and he was looking and he was just, he didn't know what to do. He was sitting in the basket. He realized he was not going to get any chocolate chip cookies. And he just couldn't control himself. Spirit got a hold of him. <laughs> he stood up in the basket and he said out loud so that everybody in the store could hear. In the name of Jesus, can somebody get me some chocolate chip cookies? And people came from all over the store and was giving him chocolate chip cookies because there is power in the name of Jesus. There's something about his name that you cannot hold on to. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous can run into it. They are safe. What a powerful name. What a beautiful name it is. Am I right about it? Uh, I, wanted, I wanted you to have an encounter with Jesus. And that, that's what makes the difference in our lives. When we have our personal encounter with Jesus. I want to thank Pastor McCoy for giving me the opportunity to share uh, the joy of having an encounter 
with Jesus. You have a wonderful pastor that I know loves the Lord. Come on, let's praise God for him. This is let's praise God for our pastor, McCoy. He is a man that, that loves the Lord. And his wife, they, uh, they treated me so kindly and lovely this, this week so far, and I'm thankful for them. But you know, it's nothing like getting to know Jesus for yourself. And once you know him for yourself, he makes a difference in your life. It, it changes every, every attitude. Your perspective change. Even the unhinged people uh, change when they have an encounter with Jesus. Long time ago, here in Oklahoma City, I was in an evangelistic meeting as a little boy. And a preacher preached. And... I, I felt like I wasn't ready for Jesus to come, and that's when I had my real first encounter with Jesus. But every day, I need an encounter with Jesus. Every moment of the day, I need an encounter, and that's why it's important to have that encounter with Jesus. I heard an old, old story how a savior came from glory how he gave his life on calvary to save a wretch like me i heard about his groaning Mm -hmm. His precious blood atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. I heard about. His healing, his precious blood revealing how he calls the lame to walk again and made the blind to see. And then I cried, oh, Jesus, come heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came to me and won, he won the victory, oh, 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 victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He plunged me and brought me beneath his cleansing blood. He won the air. Oh, before I knew him and all oh, my love, every hallelujah, every thank you, Jesus, every praise his name is due him. He plunged me to victory. It was beneath the cleansing flood. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. May my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. This morning, I would like to speak from the subject, you don't know me like that. 
you don't know me like that. If you turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 19, I want to read a few verses, verses 1 through 10. Luke, chapter 19, starting with verse 1. If you have it, say, I've got it. If you, need a little bit, if you need a little bit more time, say, just wait a minute. Yeah. All right. Just wait a minute. Luke is in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke chapter 19, starting with verse 1. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and he came down and received him joyfully. But when they saw it, they all complained, saying, he has gone to be the guest, to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. I have the unique privilege to give Bible studies in Memphis City Jail every Monday. The young men that are there have stories of homes of disaster, stupid choices, social economic disparities, and mental disorders. We are a nation that have chosen to spend more money on incarceration than education. We spend more money on fighting abortions than fighting guns on the streets. We have a problem with Russia invading Ukraine, but we're comfortable with Israel's genocide of the Palestinians. We live in a nation that's duplicitous, destructive, and desperate. Our mission is to invite all people to have an encounter with Jesus. The health message is good, but it is not our main message, because the health message will not stop all diseases. We need an encounter with Jesus. The Sabbath truth is, is enlightening, but it will not stop the poverty rate. Uh, people need an encounter with Jesus. Even the second coming of Jesus is exciting, but for the hungry and the hurting and the hopeless, they need something right now. I believe that the Church of the Living God has a mission to invite people to have an encounter with Jesus. Maybe our didactic and intellectual constructs have, have made us lose sight of the customer that we're to serve. It's possible that as a church we have become more of an institution than a movement. 
We're concerned about the physical building more than our spiritual beliefs. We don't see, uh, we don't seem to see the minority. We don't seem to see the marginalized. Sometimes we don't see the millennials. We see them, but we don't really know who they are. To create an encounter with Jesus moment, I have to know the mission of Jesus. Jesus said, I've come to seek and save that which is lost. Jesus is concerned about people that are lost. Am I right about it? Jesus is concerned to touch the lives of people that have no idea of what they're doing and how they can get out of what they're in. And those people are not always outside of these hallowed halls some lost people are right here in the church. Auntie Ellen wrote in the book, Ministry of Healing, Christ's methods alone will give true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with the people as one who desired their good. He showed sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence. Then he invited them to follow me. There, there has to be some mingling with people if we're going to win them for Jesus. It's not enough for us to meet here. Amen. There's a world outside. Here in Oklahoma City, there, there's people outside that need to see you. And maybe you won't come dressed up in your Sabbath best. Maybe you just have your jeans on and, and a shirt. But you know, God is okay with that. Am I right about it? There, there's some people that we don't, we don't even have to ask them for an offering. We can just share God's love with them. Or maybe we can just listen to them. Maybe we can just rub shoulders with them. I'm not saying that they're going to join the church, but I think that there has to be some love that we show to people that are outside. If the only thing we do is worship in here, then we are not doing what God wants us to do. And the problem is, is that we, we sometimes feel that, this is, this, that having church is what it's all about. Real church is not in here. Real church is out there. Amen. So Jesus, Jesus' story of Zacchaeus, they, they give us an example of Christ's method. This is a popular story. I remember as a little kid hearing the story of Zacchaeus. We can see Jesus um, in this story. He does some amazing things. First, he saves a rich Republican. I'm sorry, rich publican. And this story teaches us that Jesus knows what tree you're in. Everybody's got some kind of tree that they're in. And Jesus knows where your tree is. This, this story, we learn the situations in our lives should not block our view from Jesus. We should keep our view on Jesus. But most of all, in this lesson, in this lesson we should learn confession is good for the soul. When I was a little boy, my brother Joel and I, we would get into a lot of mischief. It was all his fault. He was four years older than me, and he would lead me down the path of perdition. He was a managed little boy, and I would have to follow him because if I didn't follow him, he would beat me up. He told me, Alex, it's okay for you. See, he, he had some twisted views. He, he said, Alex, it's okay for you to sing but you cannot play the piano. We don't have people like that around our house. <laughs> he, he had all sorts of really crazy things that he taught me. One thing he taught me is how to do exactly what mom told us not to do. And, and, and when mom was not there, if mom told us not to do something, it was his job to try to do it and to get me involved in it. 
Well, mom eventually married a man named Mr. Phillips, and, and Mr. Phillips had a, a watch, and it was a beautiful watch. And my mom said, do not go in the bedroom and do not touch that watch. Well, that was just saying to, to my brother Joel, go get the watch. That, that's all that was saying to him. He was just listening, and he was looking at that watch all the time. And of course, when mom and Mr. Phillips was not around, he went into the room, he got the watch, he started putting it on, playing with it, doing all sorts of stuff, showing his friends the watch. And then finally, he broke the watch. After he broke the watch, see, he wasn't very smart either. He broke the watch, he took the watch, and he put it back on the dresser where it was broken as if it just broke by itself. So mom came and she saw the watch was broken and she was quite upset. She came and took me and Joel on a chair in the living room and she said, I'm gonna give you a chance to be truthful. Who broke the watch? And she looked at Joel first, cause she knew. And he said, mom, mama, I, mama, I didn't do it. I didn't do it, Mama. And then she looked at me and she said, Alex, did you? I said, no, I, did, I didn't touch that watch. I don't know where that watch was. I didn't go in your room. I had nothing to do with it. Well, Mom did not have video cameras in the room. But she had a way of getting the truth out of you. She started out with the belt. She said, each night until you tell the truth, I'm going to beat both of you with the belt. I think it started on Monday night. And she would beat us and beat us. And, and, and my, my brother Joel, he had a way of crying that was kind of interesting. He was saying, uh, he, was, he would say, okay, mama, okay, mama. But it was, it was kind of crazy because he'd say, okay, mama, okay, mama, okay. Every time he hit him, he would say, okay, mama. And, but he, he never did tell the truth. And, and then Tuesday and Wednesday, and then on Thursday, she pulled out the extension cord. I was innocent. I had done no wrong. And finally, my brother Joel said, OK, Mama, I, I broke the watch. Well, my problem is that I had gotten beaten. And I said, Mom, you know. So, sometimes, sometimes you get punished for somebody else's stuff. And, and in this story, we can see Zacchaeus had some, tr he had some true confessions because he had done a lot of dirt to people. I believe if we would look back at our lives, there's something that you did to somebody and um, it wasn't good. Am I right about it? It, it, it? Sometimes you do something to somebody and, and you need to confess that it was wrong and you did it and yet Sometimes we keep these things to ourselves. True confessions will produce three actions. First of all, it, it will always produce repentance. Um, repentance is a conversation first with God. Zacchaeus, the Bible says, Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, you don't need a priest to, to repent. You don't, it is not required for you to come up before the church and repent and because you did something wrong. Because see, the first person that you have dishonored is God. And until you go to God, you can't even go to somebody else. In fact, somebody else may not even listen to you. But when you go to God, even if the other person doesn't forgive you, you can be all right because you went to God. Hallelujah. Anytime you force somebody to repent, they are just telling a lie. I hate when we tell kids, now say you sorry. <laughs> they ain't sorry. You forcing them to say, making them lie. They not sorry. Just be honest, I ain't sorry. All right? Okay, but the point is that when you truly confess, true confession will change, in fact, you can't really repent on your own. It is the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. Repentance is emotional. Amen. It, it, 
it is something that has hurt you and, and you can't understand it and, and you're crying and you feel bad about it and, and you want to change it, but you can't change. How many people know you can't change the past? The past is irretrievable, but the present is available. And when you come before God, you got to say, God, I did it again. He already knows, but it's something about confession that makes it feel all right. The problem is that when we hold on to sins, repentance makes, uh, may take some time. Um, one of the saddest stories I heard was an uh, elder that told me in one of the churches I pastored that his daughter was molested by another elder while she was a little girl. He brought the elder to court, and the elder got off because they didn't have enough proof. He had to go to church with this man that had molested his daughter. And it took him some time to forgive that man. Are you all listening to me today? But he said, finally, I was able. See, repentance is not something you can always do just like that. Sometimes the pain is so deep, you have not gotten to the point. And you say, well, just trust God. Sometimes things are so painful in your life that you're not ready to repent yet. Yeah. Oh, I know I'm telling the truth. Repentance is not a one-time event. Uh, almost all of us have done at least one sin. But I guarantee you, if you've done one sin, you've done another sin. And just because you repent at one time doesn't mean that you don't need to repent another time. Good news is that God is merciful. He will forgive you over and over again. The Bible lets us know, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins, and I won't remember them anymore. The good, the good news is that you remember your sins, but once you repent, God forgets them. Isn't that good news? You remember what you did, but when, God, when you repent, God does a miracle on his mind, and he, 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 he erases, he expunges your record where it looks like you never sinned before. You just missed your shouting point right there. Hallelujah! God will forgive us and forget what we've done. If Zacchaeus was here this morning, because we would know who he was, He'd be the sharpest dressing little man in the church. If Zacchaeus was here this morning, we would see him come in the church and we'd see all the nice clothes that he had on and we'd look at his shoes and we knew that his shoes are thousands and thousands of dollar shoes. And we'd look at him and we'd know that he had it all together. And we'd look at him and you know what he'd turn and say? He would say, you don't know me like that. <laughs> you don't know me like that. <laughs> you think you know me, but, but you don't know me like that. Because I've been repenting and God has changed my life. Because of that, you think you know me, but you don't know me like that. Not only, not only confession brings repentance, but confession brings a reformation. In Luke 19, verse 9, the Bible says, and Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Not only was Zacchaeus blessed by Jesus, but his wife and his children were blessed. When you have an encounter with Jesus, he comes into your house. See, we, we don't mind Jesus in our church, but Lord, stay out of my refrigerator. I don't know if anybody listening to what I'm saying today. Lord, Lord, leave my credit card alone. Lord, don't look at my, don't look at my media. Don't look at my social media. There are places where we want Jesus to stay. Stay in church, and I can sing and, and pray, but don't go to my, 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 my music and my movies. Don't look at my Netflix uh, uh, history. Uh, and, and, but when Jesus comes in, he comes in your house. Oh, yes, he does. He comes in your house. I have an affection 
towards Little Debbie's. Confession is good for the soul. Does anybody know what Little Debbie's are? I wish, I, didn't, I wish you didn't know, but Little Debbie's are attractive to me. When I pass by a store, I know that Little Debbie's are in that store. And if I really want to be serious, I need to go another direction. Because somehow, the Little Debbie's be saying, Alex, come here, Alex. The little Debbie's are here, and there is no Little Debbie that they have made that I don't like. I like all the Little Debbie's. And it would be okay if I would just eat one Little Debbie, but I just can't. Help me, Holy Ghost. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. I just can't eat one Little Debbie. If I have one Little Debbie, I have to have another Little I know that about me. I'm not trying to fool anybody. I didn't get this big by eating lettuce. I went and ate Little Debbie's. But once I finish the little, <laughs> the little Debbie, I repent. Lord, help me. I shouldn't have ate that little Debbie. I shouldn't have ate those five, <laughs> five little Debbies, all right? And, and, and then I say, I've got to start over again. I've got to ask God to give me strength. I'll go back and start going to the gym and I'll lift some weights and my wife makes this nasty green juice that I need to drink and, and, and all the healthy stuff that she has and I'll say, I'm pretty good for a while. And every morning when I wake up, I got to say, Lord, give me victory over the little Debbies because I, I need a reformation in my life. Zacchaeus is not only blessed by Jesus coming to his house, but salvation encountered Zacchaeus when Jesus came there, the Bible says basically that, that, that Zacchaeus was saved when Jesus came to his house. Isn't that amazing? Listen, reformation is not something that you can work out on your own. You cannot make yourself reform. We used to have a school a long time ago in Boley, Oklahoma, called a reform school. <laughs> Y'all don't remember that. That was, that was a long time ago. And I wonder, why do they call it a reform? Why do they call it a reform school? I wish sometimes in church, Pastor, that I can get a reform school going on where, where we can change people, but we don't have the ability, we don't have the psychology, we don't have the belts to change people. <laughs> uh, there's so much recidivism even in the jail because we can't, only person that can reform you is Jesus. Old songwriter said, not the labor of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal respite? No, all for sin could not atone. Thou must say, and thou alone, rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. There is something about having a relationship, an encounter with Jesus that reforms your life where I can drive by a little Debbie and not eat it. Amen. I, I don't claim the victory over little Debbies, but I got the victory today. It's a Sabbath. I can't go in and buy a little Debbie. <laughs> When, when we confess to Jesus, he will supply the reformation. And if Zacchaeus, he just texted me just a few seconds ago. I read his text, and you know what he said? You don't know me like that. <laughs> you don't know me like that. You, you, think, you, you think that I'm always trying to steal from you. You think that I'm always trying to get money from you, but you don't know me like that. When you confess... Not only does it bring reformation, but it brings restitution. Restitution. Then Zacchaeus, the Bible says, stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. They hated Zacchaeus in that community. Their strongest opprobrium, their hardest criticism was toward Zacchaeus. If Zacchaeus was in voice of hope, 
he would have been disfellowshipped. If Zacchaeus was in the neighborhood, he would be disrespected. If Zacchaeus tried to join the club, he would be disqualified. See, Zacchaeus, <laughs> he wore um, a little red MAGA hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all not listening to me today. Uh, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a racist. Zacchaeus was a Christian nationalist. He didn't care about serving God. But somehow, when he listened to John the Baptist preach from the Jordan River, he realized there was a God that was above his riches. And he decided he wanted to meet Jesus. And before he met Jesus, he started changing his life. He just heard about him, and his life started changing. Uh, he, he, he had an encounter with Jesus. And he stood up, and he said, I know I stole from y'all. but I'm again, Can you imagine how people said, what? That is not Zacchaeus. He has never given anything back to anybody. But you know, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you will do some things that you've never done before. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you will go back to people that you messed up, that you talked about, that you talked about their mama, that you did all sorts of things to them, and you'll go back and you'll say, look, I was wrong in what I did, but you can't do it unless you have an encounter with Jesus. One Friday afternoon, Jesus hung on a cross between two sinners because his death in our, for our lives. Satan looks at us and Satan says that you are a sinner, but we can say to Satan, you don't know me like that. <laughs> and Satan says, I know you're not going to make it. I know you've fallen and, and you've fallen over and over again. I know you've gone away from God and, and you're not really serving him. But because of Calvary, we can say, you don't know me like that. <laughs> you used to know me, but you don't know me like that. I'm a different person. Zacchaeus was a sinner. But the Bible said salvation had come to his house. Hallelujah. You, you may see my sins, but you don't know me like that. Some sins you don't even see, but you don't know me like that. You don't know what God has done to me. You don't know how he's taken me out of darkness and brought me into his marvelous light. You don't know the testimony that he's given me, that even though I'm weak, even though I've turned from him, he still gives me another chance. You don't know me like that. We don't have very much time. One day soon, Jesus is going to come. I believe it with all my heart. I've been preaching it for years, but I want to be ready for it. We are in a time where anything can pop off at any time. Daniel said, there's going to be a time of trouble. And God's people are not going to be raptured out of the time of trouble. You know, God does his best work in troubled times. God likes to put you in troubled times so that you can realize that you didn't get the victory on your own. And we're going to go through some troubled times. Ellen White dipped her pen in the ink of heaven, and she wrote in the book, Great Controversy, it is at midnight that God manifests his power for the deliverance of his people. The sun appears shining in its strength. Signs and wonders follow in quick succession. Everything in nature seems turned out of its course. Streams cease to flow. Dark, heavy clouds rise up and clash against each other. But in the midst of the angry heavens is one clear space of indescribable glory whence come the voice of God like the sound of many waters saying it is done one day it's going to be done yeah. Satan will come up to you and all the evil angels will try to stop you all you have to say is you don't know me like that <laughs> get back you don't know me like that you don't know all the things that God has done in my life I don't know about you but I'm so glad that God has changed my life if you want an encounter with Jesus people won't know you that's all right as long as you know him am I right about it 
Look, look, look. We got to be right with God, church. Whether you're online or whether you're here in this room today. God wants to save us. I said God wants to save us. Isn't that good news? As bad as we are, God wants to save us. But we, he will not force you to be saved. Today, I want to make an appeal. I want you to decide to be so close to Jesus that people that think they know you won't know you. <laughs> They'll say, what, what happened to her? She used to curse. She used to lie. She was a gossiper. And she, she was kind of fresh, too. Help me, Holy Ghost. What happened to him? He was always fighting. He always had a blunt in his pocket. <laughs> he, he always was doing some marijuana. He, he always was selling some drugs. He always was doing some things that he knew was wrong. And, and what, what happened to him? And they'll look at you and they'll say, boy, I don't know him like that. It's because the Holy Spirit has come into your life. Maybe Jesus will come into some people's life that are hypocrites. Somebody told me the other day, I don't like to go to church because there's so many hypocrites in the church. Where are the hypocrites supposed to go? They got to go somewhere. Loves hypocrites. 